I'm Christine. After working hard for many years accumulating material things, I decided to sell it all. Now I travel living out of my SUV. I roam around looking for adventure, food, and fun. If you'd like to be my travel buddy, then like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Join my Patreon or YouTube membership community for exclusive perks and content. Woo! In this video, I start out my tour of the city that likes to keep things weird by a browse through a unique and eclectic store of uncommon objects. I stroll through a beautiful garden estate full of gorgeous peacocks. I watch the sunrise at the highest point in Austin at Mount Bunnell. I chow down on some delicious Tex-Mex food. I find lots of cool things to see downtown. And I witness the largest urban bat colony in North America take flight at dusk. I am in Austin, Texas. The unofficial motto here is keep Austin weird. This slogan promotes supporting locally owned small businesses and embracing the city's quirky nature. That being said, I think a good start to our adventures here would be to browse uncommon objects. Uncommon Objects is a one-of-a-kind treasure trove nestled in the heart of Austin. Perusing this captivating emporium of curiosities is like embarking on a journey through time and whimsy. As you step through the door, a wave of nostalgia washes over you. The scent of aged wood and old paper fills your senses, evoking memories of forgotten attics and cherished relics. This is a hint about where we're going next. Uncommon Objects is a sanctuary of the past, a place where history whispers its secrets to those willing to listen. From vintage typewriters to taxidermy wonders, every corner of Uncommon Objects is a testament to the beauty of the past and the allure of the uncommon. Wow, this looks so real. Uncommon Objects was founded over 25 years ago by a passionate collector with an eye for the extraordinary. What started as a small antique booth has blossomed into a beloved institution drawing visitors from far and wide. But it's not just the merchandise that makes Uncommon Objects special, it's the stories behind each piece. As I roamed the aisles, I found myself captivated by imagining the origin and life these objects had lived with their owners. Each object seemed to have an emotion tied to it. There were dolls that must have brought children of the past a lot of joy, there were tools that brought the satisfaction of creating and producing. There was fancy dishware that must have seen lots of happy celebrations. Even the newer items still made my mind wander by imagining what inspired the creator to those specific details and what appealed to the store owner to include it in their special collection here. Uncommon Objects is a place where the past comes to life and the uncommon becomes unforgettable. Clue number two. I don't know why I try to do like mysterious guessing games with you guys. I make an intro. You already know where we're going next. That was one of the most eclectic collections of unique items I've ever seen. That really was quite the experience just looking at all of those things. Let's switch gears though and seek out some nature. I'm at Mayfield Park. This area is known for being home to several wild peacocks. I don't know where to find them, so I'm just gonna wander around until I see one. I think I've already heard one. Like if they sound like a dying cat, then I think there's one close by. <laughs> The peacocks were used to people, so I was able to get very close to them. These quickly became my new favorite bird. I was mesmerized by their deeply beautiful colors. From the shimmering bright blue of their heads down to the tips of their plentiful multicolored feathers was striking natural beauty. Peacocks are known for having one of the most spectacular mating displays. When a male wants to attract a female, he props up his train of feathers and unfolds it like a fan into a semicircle that can measure around six to seven feet wide. I wish I could say their call was just as beautiful, but you can't win them all. The Mayfield Park Estate and its resident peacocks boast a history as colorful and captivating as the birds themselves. This enchanting Austin oasis has delighted visitors for decades with its lush gardens, historic cottage, and the iconic presence of its peafowl population. The story of Mayfield Park Estate begins in the late 19th century when Allison Mayfield, a prominent figure in Austin's history, purchased the land. He built a grand two-story Victorian-style cottage surrounded by sprawling gardens, creating a picturesque retreat away from the hustle and bustle of the city. 
In the 1930s, the new owner introduced a small flock of peafowl to the grounds, where they quickly became a beloved fixture of the estate. With their iridescent plumage and regal demeanor, the peacocks add an air of elegance and mystique to the tranquil surroundings. Over the years, the peacock population at Mayfield Park Estate flourished. Roaming freely amidst the gardens and captivating visitors with their dazzling displays. Visitors can wander through the meticulously manicured gardens, explore the historic cottage, and bask in the presence of the iconic peacocks that continue to call this enchanting sanctuary home. I think like peacocks must be the most beautiful animal that there is. Like they're so pretty and colorful and just extra. <laughs> I love it. The lady that feeds the birds gave me one of the peacock feathers. I put it in my car behind my picture of Chase. These guys are so gorgeous. I've spent hours here today, but it's starting to get dark, so I'm gonna call it for the day. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. We are going to start the day by walking the 102 stairs up to the highest point in Austin, which is Mount Bunnell. It's supposed to have a great view of the city, and I'm excited to see the sunrise. Austin is known for its great Tex-Mex food. I have never had flautas before and my stomach is growling to try them. Flautas are a popular Mexican dish made by rolling up a filling, typically shredded chicken, beef, or pork, in a tortilla and frying it until crispy. They are often served with toppings like lettuce, salsa, guacamole, and sour cream. The name flauta means flute in Spanish, referring to the rolled shape resembling a flute. So I looked at the menu beforehand and I knew I wanted to try these flautas because I never had them before and they looked amazing online and in real life. <laughs> also, when I asked to film in here and told them about the channel that I was making a video, they threw in an order of Maria tacos. I have had these once before uh, at a Cinco de Mayo celebration in Detroit and oh my god, they were so good. So I am so excited to try these. They look delicious. And I wasn't going to get anything to drink, but since I had this feast, it turned into a thing and I got a grapefruit burrito with soda. Let's try this first. I'm thirsty. Oh, so good. Tastes like, uh, remember that ruby red squirt pop? Do they still make that? Mm, it's very good. The birria tacos are very messy. I remember that from when I did try them before, so I will try that second. First bite of flautas. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. The shell is the star. The shell is a corn tortilla that is fried and oh my word, so tasty. It is flavored with cilantro and onion and topped with crema sauce. Mm. It's really good. I'm not gonna mess around with cutting it into nice little pieces. I'm just gonna pick the whole thing up and eat it. Mm. I actually wanted to order these tacos too, but it, I thought it was too much food. He must've read my mind. I already know I'm gonna love this. Mmm. You kidding me? Mmm. The flautas were good. This is great. It is messy as expected, but isn't the best food the messiest? I am <laughs> mm. very satisfied and very full, so let's move on to our next adventure. So we actually have some time to kill before our last activity, so I'm just gonna drive around downtown and look for cool stuff. This is the Congress Avenue Bridge. It is famous for hosting the largest urban bat colony in North America. At sunset, the bats emerge from under the bridge to begin their nightly hunt for insects. 
I can hear the little squeaking noises. I'm under the bridge now. The Congress Bridge is one of the most iconic landmarks in Austin. But what makes the bridge truly unique isn't just its architecture or history, it's what lives beneath it. The unofficial mascots of Austin, the Mexican free-tailed bats, are the true stars of Congress Bridge. Every evening from spring to fall, these remarkable creatures emerge from their daytime roosts to begin their nightly hunt. With over a million bats calling this bridge home during peak season, it's one of the largest urban bat colonies in North America. Austin's unique blend of urban development and natural habitat provides the perfect environment for these bats to thrive. And their presence isn't just a spectacle, it's an essential part of the city's ecosystem. On their nightly flights, the bats eat anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000 pounds of insects, including mosquitoes and harmful agricultural pests. Each night, crowds gather along the bridge and nearby vantage points to witness this incredible natural phenomenon. It's a reminder of the beauty and diversity of the natural world right in the heart of the city. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me on my Austin adventures. I hope you liked them. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.